everyone, and welcome to Vidori's Benchmark Symposium, a video series about our 2023 State of Promotional Review Benchmarks Report. I'm Annalise, Senior Manager of Marketing and Communications at Vidori, and today I'm joined by Dr. Joe Decapite, Director of Strategy for UK and Europe at Vidori. Joe, thanks so much for joining. Hey, you're welcome. I always like hearing the doctor as well in front of my name uh, as a nice reminder of the hard work that's being put in. Absolutely. Happy to provide that recognition. Joe, if you could, please, for the audience, just briefly introduce yourself and your role at Vidori. Uh, yeah, so I'm Joe Decapite. I'm Director of Strategy for Vidori in, in UK and Europe. Um, probably the role that I try to bring as much as anything to Vidori is the voice of the customer. My background isn't isn't software. My background is pharmaceuticals. I started back in 2010 in pharma as a content creator. I started as a medical writer and then moved through to medical affairs. Uh, being the wrong type of doctor, I then moved into more commercial roles, so marketing, sales, market access roles, before going back to medical. But the similarity between every role that I've done in pharma, it's always been as a member of the review team, either a reviewer, leading review teams, or as a uh, commercial signatory. I've never been far away from this this business requirement and this business software. And so it's great to now be working with Vidori to make people's lives like me um, a little bit better day by day. Awesome. Thank you for that intro. And I think you're going to bring such a beneficial perspective to the conversation today. So we're going to be taking a look at a specific piece of the Benchmarks Report data today in content subtypes. So we're going to be taking a look at job duration metrics by content subtype. And what I mean by that is different types of content. So we could think about social media, videos and podcasts, the different types of materials that folks are creating for their commercial strategies and routing through the review and approval process. Joe, I'm curious to get from your perspective. I know you've shared that you've served a lot of different roles at pharma companies and beyond. Why, why would this type of data be beneficial to you in those roles? Why would understanding how long a certain type of content would take to review and approve be helpful? The um, the obvious answer is planning. It's always nice to be able to look at the upcoming work that you're ever working on and know what you can realistically deliver in any time period. Um, the reality is you always want to know how you're performing compared to um, other companies in your area. So being able to see what the benchmarks data says and you can then look at your own data and you can get an idea of whether the performance of your review team is something that warrants a key focus. That might be an area of key improvement for your team. If you're already performing well, it means that maybe actually that's an area that you can um, make sure you maintain, but doesn't need to be a key area of improvement, allowing you maybe to focus on some of the other areas that are going to impact on how we get the right medicines to the right patients at the right time. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the 2023 Benchmarks Report tells us. So on your screen, you're seeing this section of the report. So again, this is job duration by content subtype. You're seeing on the left-hand side all the different content subtypes we're presenting in the report. And then you're seeing both the mean job duration as well as the median job duration. Now, quick level setting on definitions just to make sure that everyone is sort of reading this data in the same way. Job duration is the number of days it takes to review and approve a new piece of content, including preparation, review, feedback consolidation, and approval. So as you look at these numbers, think about the totality of time it takes to review and approve a single piece of content. And one of the new elements in this year's report is we are presenting means or averages for the job duration as well as medians. Now, we have a whole uh, dedicated video on this topic, so please be sure to go watch that. Uh, after this, if you're interested in learning more, but just as a quick overview of sort of what these different metrics mean alongside one another. So mean is just going to be, again, that, you know, the average of all of the values. When we look at our data set, it is positively skewed. So what that means is the median is actually going to be that better representation of the typical time it takes to review and approve content. That being said, both metrics are really advantageous to have and know about, especially as it relates to content subtype, which Joe, you and I can get to in a little bit here. But again, please go watch that video on mean and median if you're interested in learning more. Joe, just curious to get your perspective here. What stands out to you as you take a look at this data set around content subtypes? The thing that jumps out to me on reviewing the different job types, whenever, I, whenever I've been working in pharma and thinking about the different types of jobs that I'm about to put through, 
there is always three things that come into my mind about how how long it's going to take to get something through the review system. So okay. three things I think that impact. So you're talking about the size of the material. Mm -hmm. So a hundred page MSL slide deck is always going to take a long time to get through because there's a high volume of things to check. Sure. The second thing is second thing is complexity. So that first e sales aid that you the first time that new e sales aid gets reviewed, that's also going to take a long time because there's going to be a lot of links. It's going to be complex because these are new messages being used for the first time. And it's going to be the core material that goes into so many other materials. So the complexity comes in there. And the final thing is risk. So things like press releases and advisory boards, they're absolutely legitimate activities that pharma companies can do, but they're more risky because if you get press releases wrong or advisory boards wrong, the risk to the company increases because you end up promoting a product before it's got marketing authorization. Uh, you can end up promoting a product to the general public or to patients. And in the case of advisory boards, you end up, if you uh, are found in breach of the rules of promo uh, promotion in that advisory board, you end up paying people to promote to them. So that's the third mm -hmm. thing that comes in that influences the length of a job. It's the risk associated with it. And as we go through this, this job, uh, the set of jobs, I was looking at the ones that go through the quickest and the ones that were taking the longest to go through. And I think size, complexity, and risk came through in a number of different ways. Joe, um, what about familiarity? So one thing that we've talked about in some other videos, and it relates more to the mean and median conversation as we think about median being more of that typical time it takes to review. And I think it's inherent in some of your comments around length and content complexity is familiarity. Mm -hmm. If you're routing social media content weekly, right? This is something that is part of your commercial strategy. It's you're just reviewing and approving a lot of this type of content. It might be that those job durations are going to be lower, right? People have more clear expectations around what's required of them in the review process versus perhaps a more complex, long hundred page document, like a white paper that you're only doing a couple of times a year. Does familiarity contribute at all to job durations at all? You know, if you're not used to reviewing a specific content subtype, could that impact the job duration and, and the review times as well yeah so let's let's talk about familiarity in two different ways there's familiarity with the materials so when i was talking mm -hmm. about complexity um i talked specifically about that first sales aid of a new campaign yeah. so whenever there's a new campaign coming through people are not familiar with the claims they're not familiar with the story flow they're not mm -hmm. familiar with the look feel of that piece and so the overall impression it might have so that lack of familiarity increases the complexity of the material itself. Now, companies are very, very good at doing sales aids. It's one of the, it's probably one of the jobs that people have been doing for the longest, um, longer than any other type of job. But the messages and the type of messages being in there can be the thing that takes away from the familiarity of getting those through. Mm -hmm. Your point on social media was actually a really, really pertinent one because that was one of the things that jumped out to me looking at um, content subtypes. It's also one of the conversations I enjoy having most with the um, with people in pharma and life science. What I would say from social media is every company seems to be struggling with social media in different ways. And that's where the lack of familiarity does come in because I don't think anybody has a social media process that they are familiar with, that they've been working with in a number of different companies. And so anyone coming into a new company has to learn that company's social media principles. Sure. Um, we, one of the, probably the worst practices that we, that I have seen, not in our customers, but as, as I talk to people uh, throughout the life cycle industry, sometimes those materials even bypass um, the mm. medical legal regulatory review software because yep. companies are so unfamiliar with how to get a process that works for them, they maybe cut corners where they shouldn't. Now, the thing with social media is, actually the material itself can be very simple. So it doesn't have size. They can be very right. short posts. Mm -hmm. They're not often complex messages. But what people need to realize is the risk of social media is extremely high because if you get something wrong on social media, it has that additional factor, maybe like 
3B are a fourth factor of visibility. All of your competitors get to see everything you do on social media. So whereas I remember when I started in the industry, the piece of material that was the risky piece was the uh, the doctor's leave piece. It was risky because you left it behind with the doctor and they may then pass it on to a competitor or it may end up in the hands of competitor competitors. Social media is by its nature visible. And so the risk increases. And the risk is that if you get it wrong and you promote to patients or you promote prior to your marketing authorization, then the sanctions are high. So this is a call out for people really from my, pers- yeah. my perspective. If you're doing social media, treat it with, don't, don't be fooled by its size or its perceived lack of complexity. The risk is high. Make sure you have proper processes with social media before you embark on those activities. Yeah, really helpful. And I think inherent in social media too is it's always changing. And so not only do you have this maybe elevated risk factor with the content itself, but the platforms are changing constantly. And so organizations consistently have to adapt to what is the latest best practice we need to be implementing for our social media presence. And so there are so many factors that go into social media content in general as we think about that as a subtype. Yeah, and I think that's the pressure that has sometimes put companies into bypassing the best practices that they have for all of their other materials because they know they have to be responsive and they know with social media volume of posts is important and that's probably where some companies have come at risk uh, have have fallen foul of the rules because they are trying to do too much too soon without following a tried and tested process that they have for all of their other materials yeah absolutely really able to talk through um, talk, talk to me more, like what else, you know, we talked about social media a bit, what else sort of stood out to you in terms of the, the content subtype, what else would yeah. you call out for organizations reading this report? Yeah, there were two things that, so I immediately went to the materials that were the quickest to get through and the materials sure. that were the longest to get through. So we have in here presentations and posters. Now, what I would say is the categories that we use reflect the categories that our customers use as well. So we, we've yeah. had to use those um, and we're trying to pull data together from, you know, a hundred different, a hundred different customers, you know, five to 10,000 users. So we've had to make some of those judgments on the content subtypes. What I'd say about presentations and posters, they can be quick to go through. They're mm-hmm. generally low risk because especially posters, they are one of those, um, they really are almost a protected type of material. It's a legitimate exchange of scientific information to present posters at Congress. Um, okay. Likewise, yeah. a number of the other MSL presentations are generally seen as lower risk. So they can, can be quite complex, quite high science, but the risk is a bit lower. I would just say on, there have been a few, I can recall just one or two code cases where posters have been found in breach, but usually for quite specific things. So posters and presentations were the fastest content subtype to go through a similarly invitation customer letters and flyers now i consider these as the kind of peripheral materials that go alongside um usually sales rep meetings now these are again lower risk because usually the agenda the meeting approval has happened separately and these additional things are just um kind of reworking of that same information. So I think that's why they're going through uh, more quickly. Yep. So my eyes after that then went to the ones that are taking a longer time. So yeah, truly. the first yeah. one is, yeah, videos, podcasts, and webinars. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. videos brought back all kinds of all kinds of bad memories trying to get videos approved <laughs> through, um, through systems. Um, yeah. Actually, it's probably not, it's not something that all of our Peverflow users will, they won't feel my pain so much because I think video review is actually one of the things that was in our V1.1 release. So it's been yes. available back from like 2017, 2018. I didn't always yep. have access to video review. So I'm used to having to review videos as a PDF and then separately accessing the video and going back to the PDF. So I mean, that in so many yeah, really time intensive. I don't think that's what's happening here because all of these by their nature are Pepperflow users and so have um, access to our video review. What I think what I think is of note, when it comes to reviewing a video, there's no way of 
quickly assessing that second circulation when it comes through. There's no easy way of quickly reviewing that to see, well, I'm just going to go to the bits that have changed. You have to review the whole video at the pace of the video. It's not like a PDF document that you can put up right. side by side. You can use our version comparison tool and just go to the bits that matter. You have to review the whole thing. So that's one thing that slows the review itself. But then incorporating the comments on the and the changes is also much slower with videos. So I think that's yeah. one of the things that pushes up the complexity. There's also risk associated with webinars, particularly in the UK. They've been the cause of a number of recent complaints and some of the most yeah. serious sanctions have been associated with webinars. So they've got that thing of um, they're long, right. relatively complex and quite risky. Yeah. Um, and I would probably put websites in the same same thing there and their visibility push, pushes them up. Now, the thing that's actually the longest on here, the, the longest uh, medium job duration is the product list, uh, catalog, fact, data, spec sheet. I'll be honest, these are not something I'm very familiar with at all. And I'm going to make the assumption that these come from that 50% of our users who are from the device and diagnostic side of the business because yep. from a pharma side, these are not a familiar product. Um, these are not a familiar review type for me, um, but clearly they're causing anxiety and a lot of time to get through the system. So I'm going to make an assumption that they're complex because they exactly. sound by their nature uh, that they're long. Yeah. Well, I think even just in your comments, you're hearkening back to what we what you mentioned up top as factors that Im that impact the the job duration. Right? So risk, as we talked about, with sort of those maybe um, lower fidelity or peripheral uh, types of content, familiarity, content density, and content complexity. These are all things that organizations should have top of mind as they're thinking about realistic expectations for job durations and how to improve their own processes. And I think, you know, going back to the video podcast webinar, some might see that as um, a little disheartening to see that 25 days. But again, if we compare the average alongside that median, that more that median metric or that more typical time to review is in you know 15.4 days so it's still yes it's still taking maybe longer than other types of content but again it is more complex you do have to watch the whole video and of course as we mentioned the job durations do take into account that feedback consolidation so working with agencies yeah. on revisions like this can these are all factors that add to time so i think it's a realistic pulse in what we're seeing and i think super relevant to organizations right now because we know video is really important it's becoming more common it's becoming more of a foundational element to commercial strategies. And so I think it'll be something that organizations should be looking to, to better understand as they think about 2024 and commercial plans, video content, what should we be expecting in terms of the review and approval time? Yeah. And to loop back to your very first question to me um, in this conversation, how would I use this um, if I was in pharma leading one of these commercial teams? I would be using this data to tell me that if I'm about to put a video up for review, I should account for it's probably going to have the same number of review circulations so our averages yep. uh, that we see from this is like about one to two circulations per job 1.4 i think is the average yes they should know that when they're d working on one of these pieces of material they could work on one of these and then a number of other pieces of material can kind of be worked on between circulations because mm -hmm. with videos it's that between circulation time that really increases the time to approval so that helps you just plan out the type of work that you're doing. I would also say use these metrics in your planning for the work. So I would use those three things, complexity, um, size of the job, and the risk to assess um, how difficult a job's going to be to get through. But then I would also use these benchmarks to you to have some realistic estimates of how long it's going to take once it hits the approval system to finally be approved and um, available for use. Absolutely. Super helpful to understand. And Joe, really interested uh, to get your perspective on this. So thank you so much for joining and uh, providing your insights. Everyone, please go download the 2023 State of Promotional Review Benchmarks Report. You can download it at vidori.com slash 2023 benchmarks. And please follow us on LinkedIn. We're going to be doing a whole series of videos focused on the data in the report, taking a deep dive conversation into nearly all of the metrics presented. So excited for everyone to join in on, on the conversation. And 
If you have questions or things that you're interested in learning more about, please drop those in the comments and we'll be sure to take those into account as well. Joe, any final comments? No, only that I look forward to coming back and talking about the different length of time taken and the first circulation approval rates from compared between medical, legal, regulatory and marketing. I have so much to add to that conversation that I look forward to having that with you, Annalise. Awesome. Well, I look forward to it as well. Thank you all so much. Yeah.